This is Konzenshu, the podcast, episode 395, for the week of February 7th, 2016. What's up? Another week here at Konzenshu. The podcast. Thank you. And an extension of the all-encompassing Dragon Ball fan site. Sorry, I didn't really prep you for that coming. Konzenshu? We cover anything and everything Dragon Ball in hopes of enlightening and a little bit of entertaining. My name is Mike Vegito EX. Joining me, I'm not alone this week. So glad to have the man, the myth, the legend. I don't know why you're a celebrity, but... That was the best episode last week. Was it? Just... Listening to you talk to yourself was <laughs> kind of like the best thing ever for me, so. If you say so, Heath, it's you, Gio. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm tired of snow, so too, if man. we could all move somewhere that's nice and warm, that would Cons- be awesome. <laughs> Consensus going out to join Jake. Yep. Here we come. We're all crashing. I am uh, sorry I could not grab you last week for the show. We had some uh, kitty issues and I heard. some other stuff. Everyone's good. It's all good now, though. So I took the time that I could take, but you are here with me now. Uh, Heath, uh, maybe let's get into it a little bit. Last week's topic was prompted by some of the changes we're doing on the website. And this all came about really because it's a subject or a topic, a conversation that all four of us at the site really enjoy, if you can't tell. That's names and translations transliterations, adaptations. Uh, And as Dragon Ball Super is kind of coming to a point where we have new characters and we're adapting new character names into our alphabet, well, it was a a good opportunity to go back and say, well, nothing is sacred. Let's take a look at everything on the site. Is there anything we want to change or adapt or adjust in some way? And I mean, when when we originally launched Consensu, I mean, we went back yeah back to the basics and said what do we want to update what do we want to change and yeah we just we had debates which were often i would say fun but uh, <laughs> some of them more heated than others some of yes them, it, no well one... it depends on who you were talking to that, that's true <laughs> uh but yeah so we decided hey let's open this back up um, again. because we had some all those years ago that we actually never really came to a conclusion on mm-hmm. and so they just stuck They've just been sitting there and Jake will write it one way in the translation and then I'll put it on the page. Like, wait, is that how we do it? I I don't know. I'll just. Well, that's why we all review things, because you write things and then I change it. And Jake writes things and I change it. So Uh it's just it's constantly uh, who's the most familiar with what term. So one of the things that we have done is uh, look at the Boo arc in particular. Uh, and I, I teased it last episode. We have changed our site's spellings for Bibbidi, Bobbidi, and Boo. Boo is still up in the air. Well, the, uh, first, the first part of his name. The preceding. Yes. The, yes. the non-name part of his name. We're still kind of deciding. But uh, yeah, we're, we're going incidentally with what Viz used. And I kind of forgot that they did it this way. Uh, and, you know, I criticize Viz Boo Arc names. And you heard some of that in the, the last episode. Just uh, I feel like some of their consistency isn't always there. And the Boo Arc really seem to be, I've always said that they're they're trying to be too clever for their own good at points, but Bibbidi Bobbidi and Boo, my argument for or against, and I hadn't ever really done the appropriate research into it, is so are they actually puns or are they written the exact same way as the song lyrics from Cinderella? So as I was talking about last week on the show, things like Trunks, where if it's written the exact same way as the actual word, we should probably spell it that exact same way. So how did it go down with uh, these three names, Heath? Uh, we looked up the lyrics and we said, <laughs> hey, look, In they're exactly the same. I guess we could preface this with basically we had just always gone with the romanization mm-hmm. of the names. And it's not so much that, oh, name puns, we weren't sure. It was more oh, yeah, it's not like uh, didn't from know way, song. way, way back in the day. That's just how it had always been written. Mm-hmm. So we just went with it and it stuck. It was just an old carryover that I don't think it was something we even talked about when no. we initially launched Consent You. So it had always just stuck. And Jake himself has always spelled it B O O. Boo's name, so, yeah. Yeah. So we decided, well, you know, if we're doing all these other names, we might as well go with these two. Yeah. So the way that Toriyama writes them is exactly the same in Japanese as they are written in the official Japanese lyrics to the song from Cinderella. So we are now going with B I B B I D I, B O B B I D I, and B O O. There you go. Bibbidi, Bobbidi, Boo. Uh, the Majin thing. 
that mm-hmm. is a little bit up in the air right now. Uh, something yeah. I love pointing back to was the IMAX official English language press release for Battle of Gods. IMAX is uh, a company, obviously, who, you know, large screen stuff for theatrical filmings. Uh, they were involved with Battle of Gods and they talked about it being, what was it, like the first Japanese animated movie to use IMAX screenings. I mm-hmm. kind of forget what the yeah. news was surrounding it. But they were talking about the movie and how it was placed in time. And their official English language press release referred to the character, the the story arc, the time placement, as being Demon Boo. Traditionally, in our language, in our alphabet, he's always just been called Majin Boo. Thing is, Majin isn't a name. It's kind of a title, a description. It's, well, it's an, yeah, it's an actual term to describe someone. And it's a, a, a very generic almost term in Japanese. Plenty mm-hmm. of other characters. Jake and I have talked about Dr. Slump, how there's a Majin who's kind of like the last villain uh, in Dr. Slump. And it's it's a genie character. The way that Boo is and acts, he, he's really a genie. I love having this sub-conversation sometimes. Like, all the Japanese that's in Funimation's English dub that are just so ingrained into people's minds that they don't realize aren't actually meaningless proper nouns. Things like Majin, Roshi, Senzu even has a meaning. Like mm-hmm. All these kinds of things are just words and phrases, and they can be translated. Or just even character names like Kaio and right, Shenlong. Right. I mean, they're Kaio actual Shin. terms yeah, that yeah. you could translate. Right. And as we (laughs) come into 2016, I was talking about how many things have changed for me over the years. I'm really hitting a point where I'm like, fuck it, let's just translate everything. You know, you don't want me saying Saiyajin? All right, we are going hard turn on this now. (laughs) So it's like, what can we no longer write in Romanized English? Let's do it. Yeah. And there's there's a fine point. I don't want to say you're walking the line, but Yeah, there are definitely things kind of that you discussed in the last podcast that it is just so hard to even figure out. You almost have to go with a romanization Mm, because if you go a different route, it doesn't sound the same. It won't be pronounced similar enough. Uh, You go a different direction. You entirely lose the name pun, but you keep the pronunciation. It it's just it's such a fine art. And I. I really love referring to it as an art because that's really what it is. It's just putting brains together and figuring out how we can make it actually work in multiple ways. It's hard. It's tough. And there's going to be some battles that we kind of just give up on. Uh, I was talking with Mary about it uh, yesterday. She's like, all right, so what about Bulma? That is one that we've always gone back and forth on. And we personally, between the four of us, have never really had a consensus. And what sucks, too, is in a way, like we were talking about Majin Buu, it's just so ingrained in the fandom, especially North American fandom, that Bulma, I mean, but then you run into the bait, well, what about Krillin? I don't know. I feel like that one's that one's a little different because at least Viz is on our side there. True. <laughs> and in other translations and, and spellings and such. Bulma, the, the fact that it was written with those letters in the first chapter, I feel like, well, I guess. I guess we got to go with that. And It's just so weird because there are fans that you've heard for as long as I can remember, I mean, for decades now of, well, that's how it's spelled in the manga. You know, like Toriyama wrote it in Roman letters this way. And you go, well, yeah, but he wrote other names, too. And they're not even close to what it would be. And so which is something we've always tried to do is be consistent. I don't and we don't want to use something as an example to say this is why we do it this way. But then with another name, not use that same example or have somebody use it against us and be like, well, why do you do it this way? And Mm -hmm. so we've always kind of come at it from that perspective of how can we consistently do this, which is extremely difficult across a span of, you know, so many decades of just character names that all have different puns and intentions. Yeah, it's it's hard to be consistent. You try the best you can, but it's near impossible to be 100 percent. You're going to lose that battle if you try yeah. to be 100 percent consistent. Like there will be something that doesn't fit. And you go, oh, all right. I guess we have to do it this way instead. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that's kind of a, a follow up to what I was talking about by myself last week. Bibbidi bobbidi boo are some of our changes. There will be more. Uh, we're still ironing out. How are we going to do Majin? The uh, genie seems to be the best answer we've all come up with. I still like demon. Personally, I do too. Jake but... has very good arguments against it. though. I know. 
But then you run into Majin Vegeta. Well, and Majin Vegeta is another thing. It's like that wasn't even an issue because it was a fan only term. Exactly. Up until video games when yep. they started writing it as Majin Vegeta in there. It's like, ah, fuck. All right, it's in there too. Uh, all right. So let's bring that to a close because that was some nice. Yeah, these are baseball. all the fun internal debates that we have that nobody else really needs to care about. But uh, we get good responses sometimes. I know Joe in particular, Joe Walker, the Kappa from space, always mm-hmm. responds and says he enjoys these. So, Joe, that intro is for you. Now that You're we've been welcome. going for, what, like 17 minutes about stuff before we even get to the actual meat of the episode. What is going just, on this episode? I'm just going to drink my beer. You uh, keep talking. All right. This episode, as we hit nearly 18 minutes of recording, we have very brief news stories for you. This is actually, finally, in February... Our check-in on 2015 predictions and then make new predictions. As I was looking last year, we actually had about the two-month period between November and January with no podcast episodes. And last year's check-in was at the end of January, so I'm not entirely too far off from how we did it last year. We'll see if next year can get a little bit back on track, but uh, that's what's going on. We have some quick news. Let's just go ahead and do it. In video game news, if you're listening to this right now, there is a sale going on on PlayStation Network in North America. Bandai Namco is doing their Play Anime Games sale, and there's some great stuff like Dark Souls 2 in the mix. (laughs) It's just kind of like general Bandai Namco games. I appreciated that comment on the website. I'm clicking it here. Who was that? That was Lance who made that wonderful comment. Thank you, Lance. Uh, Different Lance from the other Lance, not the gaffer Lance. A more different Lance. Battle of Z is uh, heavily on sale. PS3 version 750 and the Vita version is five bucks. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about picking that up. Yeah, for, for, for that once. price? You might as well. Yeah. Um, and then Xenoverse is actually on sale as well. Heavy discounts. Um, both the PS3 and 4 versions are $16, but the Season Pass is finally on sale as well. So you can get a big bundle with everything for uh, $26, actually. So if you have not picked up Xenoverse yet, that's a wonderful price to grab it at. One more bit of Xenoverse news. Uh, we just saw, was this yesterday, as of, rec- as of our recording, uh, Bandai Namco announced through a Famitsu article, this is another one of those where everyone's in bed over there and news is kind of press announcements wrapped up in a news story. Uh, Xenoverse has shipped over 3 million copies worldwide, a pretty darn good selling game. This is going to tie into some predictions. Breakdowns about 230,000 copies in Japan, 60,000 copies outside there in Asia, a um, little over uh, 1.7, 1.78 million copies in America, and then just over a million copies in Europe, adding up to just over 3 million copies worldwide. That's that's pretty big. That is shipment numbers, the way they uh, wrote about it there, but that does also include digital download versions. So mixing that all together, over 3 million copies of That Zoom is always weird there. to see sometimes just the in japan sales of something versus Mm -hmm. the rest of the world sales and it's you really just kind of go man if it weren't for the rest of the world Mm. would this still be a thing yeah would they be able to afford the uh the budgets that they're putting into these games it it really does show just how much north america and europe especially since the ps2 days they always noted our influence on their sales and just there's less people in japan uh and it is a more mobile market there as opposed to the traditional console games these days so all right moving away from video games heath tell us about box two for dragon ball super so as of this last week online retailers have been begun updating their listings for the second Dragon Ball Super home video box set in Japan. Uh, The first one just came out a couple months ago, so it's nice to finally get some cover art, although again, not super original, but it does come with an exclusive booklet. Uh, It's usually about 8 to 16 pages, interviews, artwork, you know, a nice little booklet. And then along with the 16-page special booklet that comes with it with new illustrations, uh, some on-disc extras will include a creditless opening, the Freezer version of Chozetsu Dynamic, and the new ending starring Star. When you say the new ending, we actually have yet another new ending. Yeah, at this point we have a new one. But at that point, it was (laughs) was the new one. the new ending. That's right. I, I have a feeling each of these box sets will have a new ending at this rate. Yeah. Probably. You know, every 12 episodes, that sounds about right. Yeah. The big question is, well, we have animation updates. We don't know. (laughs) I doubt it. But sure. Uh, So yeah, you can pick that up through Amazon Japan, CD Japan. The DVD sets are retailing for about 
what, $120? And the Blu-ray sets are about $150. Uh, this set will drop March 2nd, so coming up very shortly, and it will cover episodes 13 through 24, which as of this recording, episode 30 airs tonight. Yepers. Uh, the only other news, which uh, kind of just sitting there in draft hell right now, so hopefully by the time you <laughs> listen to this, it's up there. Uh, we got cover art for the uh, upcoming Dragon Ball Godly Best compilation, which is going to be two discs. Not a very exciting piece of cover art, but we did get info on the DVD that comes with the limited edition. It's going to have seven openings, the seven that you would expect. So Mystical Adventure, Hechala, We Got a Power, Don Don, uh, let's see, uh, Dragon Soul, I'm doing this from memory because I don't have the draft up, uh, Kuzen, Kuzen Zetsu, Zetsu Go, Go, and then Chozetsu Dynamic. Those are going to yep. be the openings that you get on there. And I believe there was a note about how there is not a creditless version of the GT opening. That's interesting to me that perhaps they don't actually have that. Gotta love Toei. Keeping them masters clean, I see. Oh, yeah. They said, hey, where's the dumpster? GT's done. <laughs> oh, that's sad. I don't really have anything against GT. <laughs> I don't either. I just, I have something against Toei just throwing everything away all the time. That's true. I do. All right. So that was the news. Let's actually get into the real content this episode, which is predictions. So the way we like to do this is we kind of read each other's stuff from the previous year and we see how we did. Um, every year we make predictions for the next year that we check in on them. So that's what we're doing here again. Last year, uh, Julian and I managed the show. So I will read Julian's predictions. Heath, I guess you will read mine and judge me. And then By I'll default. come back and then, <laughs> and then I'll come back and I will read yours. Um, and we have one prediction from Jake for this year. So that'll be fun. So let's just start at the top. Julian said last year. There will be a flood of ancillary materials to come out alongside the new movie, and he will drown in a pile of translations. Um, yes and no on this. I really felt like the amount of stuff for F was uh, smaller, a smaller amount than there was Much for Battle of Gods. less, especially from Toriyama. Yeah. It was mostly Nozawa that was... Yeah, kinda she was kind of running everywhere. the show. I mean, there was still a lot of stuff and there's even still mm -hmm. a couple things that we have yet to get to. But I mean, looking at just at my shelf with the amount of stuff Julian had to pick <sighs> up for Battle yeah. of Gods, I mean, it was every other magazine. It makes sense when you think about it. It was the first yeah. new movie. Of course, yeah. And um, you had a, a script writer change. You had Toriyama coming. I mean, there was so much backstory mm -hmm. to Battle of God with... Resurrection F, it wasn't quite, I don't want to say the hype, but... Yeah, yeah. it wasn't as novel anymore. Mm -hmm. Especially once they were like, hey, Dragon Ball Super is coming. Right, and they kind yeah, of forgot. that kind of trumped everything at that point. All right, Julian said, Shueisha capitalizes on the new movie to put out the rest of the full-color comics in print as well as digitally. We will come to this again. Yes, that is indeed what happened. Well, they're finally, sort of. finally getting back to it. <laughs> I would contest that it wasn't because of the new movie. Right. <laughs> but other than that, he got it right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, with your stuff. Julian said, Funimation finally announces Dragon Ball Kai, the final chapters, and it starts up on Toonami. The fans that seek wares online have heated arguments about episode counts, not realizing that each of them are actually both correct. Because remember that there was uh, that whole shebang with it wasn't going to air on Japanese TV. Then it did. Then they cut it down. Then they sent out internationally the extended versions. It was a mess. Uh, and then Julian said, Funimation is going to try to get the F movie out in time, but it'll be delayed back to 2016. Um, we'll come back to the movie thing, because, whoa, was that not accurate? Uh, you mean because we all got it wrong? <laughs> yes, we all totally did. Uh, but Spoiler. yeah, Kai Final Chapters uh, still missing in action here. We know they have it. Come on. We all know they have it. They've said everything but the literal words. Yes, we have Kai the Final Chapters, but it's still just sitting there. We'll get to that. Well, all right. We'll come back to it. Julian says, Viz surprises everyone by releasing the Kansen Bond with a new translation, but it confuses everyone with so many releases on the shelf. So they decide to go back to the full color instead. But by then, it's 2016. Wow. Um, well, you got that second part right. That first part was just a little out in left field on that one. <laughs> I think it was just, let's be crazy, before I say my actual prediction. Yeah, that's exactly how it went, where it's, we'll do more full color. Uh, check you in a year. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> and sure. We, we still don't have that next Frieza arc volume, but it is it's coming. coming pretty soon. Uh, how about this one? Dragon Ball Heroes TV shows begins in Kai's time slot, timed with God Mission 1. Uh, if Bandai Namco had their way, as we've learned, this would have been what happened in 2009 actually yes this would have been a thing not 2015 but um instead we got something else and i think that's bondi namco being there kind of like third on the totem pole of who owns what going oh would you please just let it we kind of know what we're doing here have you seen the money we're making really weird but uh no dragon well, of course Ball because everybody else is in on it as yeah. a property holder Julian said Toriyama gets everyone's hopes up by talking about a new project, but it ends up just being a color scheme for a new room in his house. That or character designs for a surprise sequel to Chrono Trigger. And yes, at the time I did let Julian know there already was a sequel to Chrono Trigger, although Toriyama had nothing to do with it. he was happy. So we'll move on from that prediction. Julian said Psycho Jump is unceremoniously brought down to a quarterly publication again. Uh, We'll come back to this one again because I had more to say about Psycho Jump. That did not happen. Yeah, you were much more brutal than he was. (laughs) I was. I was ready to. You put a knife in it before. (laughs) Slice away at it. Uh, And then Julian wrapped it up later in the episode, making it difficult for me to collect everything just like I uh, anticipated and predicted on that same episode. Discross will be a surprise gigantic smash hit and we'll be forced to eventually cover it along with everything else. Uh, we're not doing a great job covering Discross. No. But it is popular. It is popular. I get those stupid little things with everything I order. Yep. Just like Heroes cards. I'm amassing a collection. It's there. People yep. in Japan like it. Uh, I wonder if they really do or if it's just <laughs> being shoved down their throats. Like, you will like it just like you liked Heroes. Yeah. It's probably more of the latter. All right, Heath, put me through the ringer. How'd I do? Oh, God. Like 30%. Yeah, I know. Maybe. I get get worse every year. Well, we all do because we really, I think, try to go way out there on some things, which you gotta. We either try to go way out there and then they're conservative or like, all right, let's be logical about this. And that's the year, like this year with Super, where they just do whatever. Funimation will just do a home video release of Dragon Ball Z Kai, the final chapters first, and then Toonami will get it later. Yeah, like we said, still just sitting there. Uh, Kai continues to air on Toonami. I have no idea where they are right now. Uh, I assume somewhere, Frieza, or maybe even Cell. Past the Cyan arc, I know that. (laughs) I don't know. I don't have cable. I don't watch it. But uh, yeah, still just sitting there in limbo. All right. Next up, no more full color from Viz. Nothing at all except maybe just like a digital preview or something maybe st i'm mostly right there nothing from viz actually came out in 2015 it was announced though although we did get jocko but we knew that was coming out so that wouldn't really be a prediction to make there was another one where they announced it kind of like a year ahead of time just sitting there waiting for it to come out but yeah viz not so much with the dragon ball the uh three and ones continued to come out uh i'm not sure if they're done yet and uh, they announced more full color for 2016. So it's kind of a, a slow re-release year, kind of a general Funimation year, except over on Viz. It might be like 2030 by the time Viz oh, gets all the full color out at this rate. This rate, jeez. And Funimation is able to get Resurrection F out before the end of the year, but it will be the very end of the year. We did not do well on this. Uh, I think Battle of Gods. No one did well on this because it, when you based everything on battle of gods it made sense that it would be a slower release again Mm -hmm. apparently they got their shit together yeah it was really toei getting their shit together really dishing it out to most countries as most important countries or a few stragglers there but yeah they really got it out there us the united states (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean it's already out it was out on home video like a week after or two weeks after the japanese release Uh, it was kind of shoved out there and then they moved on to super so i guess with Super in mind, which we didn't know about, uh, mm. it kind of made sense the way that they were pushing it out there. And then your next question was, what do you think Funimation is going to call the movie? You threw out such suggestions as Return of Frieza, Return of the Revenge, Frieza's Revenge. Hell, will they even keep the F? Right. As opposed to naming Frieza, Julie and I were talking about how the, the naming of Frieza 
in the branding of the movie title is, is kind of important. Um, and no, uh, it turns out Funimation went with a title that Toei came out with for, exactly. for their international English language branding, Resurrection F. That's actually a Toei title. It first appeared on uh, merchandise out of Japan on the back of, I think, like the, the theatrical movie guide, something like that. No, uh, the first place it showed up was in um, Toei's official, uh, I think it was it quarterly... Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Where they that's they right. go over all their numbers right, and right. upcoming Fiscal things. Report, and yeah, that was the first time it showed up, that's and we're just right. like, "Oh, that's a weird translation for it." And then it, it ended up on everything. So, what'd you think about the title? I thought that was uh, a pretty good adaptation of the title. Oh, yeah. Ours was a little more literal than you know would probably be used. We used Revival of F. I feel like we're still in limbo whether we adopt the Resurrection F. I don't really have a problem with it, but I feel like we've put Revival of F out there so much, and people still kill people other than us still continue to use it. I feel like eh, I guess we're kind of stuck with it. And and we have pages <laughs> named right. that. And right. it's in URLs. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. I guess we could forward. I don't know. Be a mess. It would be. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Maybe in another five years, we'll uh, reapproach that. And then your next prediction was, I'm going to say half right. Going to see Super Saiyan God Vegeta this year. Don't know how, where, or why, but we will. And it will be blue. So did you like write an email and just send it to Toei and or um, Toriyama? I mean, you talk to him every day. This is going to be one of those things. And I don't know, maybe I'll have something like that for this year. And I just won't tell you. I may have known something at that point. Moving on. Xenoverse will be a semi-revival for the series on consoles. Better sales. Uh, yeah, I've seen my 3 million copies shipped worldwide. Uh, yeah, Mary and I, well, no, Julie and I were talking about a discussion Mary and I had <laughs> a year ago where we were like, they really seem like they want to do story material with this game. And mm -hmm. that's going to be something that will bring fans back to the games. Like everyone was kind of burning out on just fight, 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 fight. Um, I think everyone else finally caught up to how I had been feeling for several years at that point. I was like, I need something other than Raditz Taboo. And while Xenoverse kind of was Raditz Taboo again, it had its own unique spin on it. And, it was uh, different enough. It was, it was. And while it eventually just turned into a praying to RN Jesus and seeing how that went <laughs> uh, to get all of your yeah. uh, extra skills and capsules and that kind of stuff. Uh, by the end of the year, uh, they continued to support it. We got the three DLC packs for it, and each of them had a little bit of story material in there as well. Yeah, Xenoverse really seemed like the right thing at the right time for Dragon Ball in video games. Which leads right into your next prediction. A new game announced by the end of 2015. Not called Xenoverse, though, but a clear sequel in everything except the name. This is really curious to me, and I think we weren't expecting to have uh, DLC support for the game at the time. Um, so maybe that extended the life cycle of it uh, a few months further than it normally would have been. Dragon Ball games, when they're on schedule, they are a yearly schedule. And mm -hmm. this really seems like the time to not rest on your laurels and do two years in between console games. But here we are, a year out from Xenoverse's release last year. We don't know anything. Never mind a sequel, but is there a next console game? Nothing about it. The only thing we know is Project Fusion for the 3DS, uh, and that's only I just announced in name. I don't think that's going to be a Xenoverse sequel. No, no. That's I'm just uh, throwing it out there. No. You know. Clearly, it's a it's feeling I have. <laughs> you may be right on that. So this is a, a conversation I want to save for a little bit in uh, my next year's predictions. But yeah, Ooh. totally, totally wrong there. We still haven't heard anything about the next console game. And moving on to Dragon Ball Heroes. This was actually a good thought. I like this one. God Mission stuff is going to adhere more closely to online than Xenoverse did. Yes and, and no. And of course, you're referring to Dragon Ball Online. Yes. And yes and no in a variety of ways. Um, the masked time fighter bandit, I forget what his official title was, Bardog, uh, they, they really seemed to lean into that for the early promotion for the God Mission stuff, which didn't make sense because that was online and God Mission implies things like Beerus, uh, and we didn't know at the time, but Shampa. So it seemed like they leaned into online heavy early on and then just immediately transitioned into nope let's just go back to like Beerus and stuff 
But Heroes is also what is the hit thing in two months? We need to promote that now in Heroes. So yes, they're, they're kind exactly. of spastic with what they go with and promote at any given time. But at the same time, I mean, they have the latitude to do that. They can, yeah. I and mean, they can come back to, I mean, they went for years and then they finally caught up like, oh, there are some, there are still some Z era movie villains we haven't done. Maybe we'll throw them in the mix with you know, random GT stuff. And they can do that and it doesn't really matter. And then sticking with Dragon Ball Heroes, you said Ultimate Mission 3 would be announced this year and we'll cover a good ways into the God Mission stuff. And that did not happen. Ultimate Mission 2 continued to receive uh, free extended life support. I think we're yeah. up to patch 1.4, something like that. On the... I'm honestly kind of surprised there hasn't been an Ultimate Mission 3. Me too. I, but... I, I think the Ultimate Mission 2 sales were so well, and it continued to sell over the year. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure we talked a well, couple years, actually. Well, it kept going, and it would show up. It would come back up again and be in not just the top 20, but the top 10 again. Like, wait a minute, this game is a couple years old. And it was just because everything else was doing so well. What's the first? There's somebody turning 10. 10, like every day. No, there's like, a nine year old born every day. Come on, get the quote right. God damn it. I'm not even sure if that person is still at Funimation anymore. I don't think so. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. It's a great quote. But uh, yeah, and uh, I will readdress this in next year's predictions too. And then your final prediction, <laughs> which again is the best uh, Psycho Jump will end with zero fanfare. Collection of miscellaneous Naho Oishi stuff to come. Yeah, not so much there. Uh, Psycho Jump just kind of putters along there every other month. It exists. And we've talked on end about this I don't know, personally and probably on the podcast. I have no idea how Psycho Jump is still going. I don't either. I, I just don't. I don't know who's buying it. I, I am. <laughs> I'm the idiot well, yeah. buying it. Hey, that what American guy is buying all of our copies. We got to keep making it. Oh, Ishii, get back in there. It's my least favorite magazine because it's so thick, but it's also short and it bends the shelves I put it on because it's so yeah. heavy and it costs too much to ship and I hate it. I hate Psycho Jump so many ways. It's the weirdest size of any release I think I've seen in a long time. It's so thick and it's filled with nothing. There is nothing in Psycho Jump. It's all promo material. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. You mean you love it. That's why I wanted to kill it. It was wishful thinking. Well, you're running out of shelf space and then, well, now you corrected that problem. So <laughs> yeah, good for you. more shelves. All right. Turning it over to you, Heath. Here is what you said. I think we're going to have a reprise of several things Julian and I mentioned. Very uh, likely. The horrible experiment known as Kai will finally end. That was less a prediction and more an eventuality. Well, I think the, I even prefaced that in the episode, didn't I? Like, yeah. this isn't so much a prediction as this is going to happen. Yeah. And it but did. I just wanted to say it because it made me feel better on the inside. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You said Toei will announce an HD remaster of the series to start coming out in 2016. Yeah, fuck you, Dragon Ball Super. God. You think if Super wasn't a thing, that's what would have happened? That was my prediction, yeah. yes. Uh, that, we didn't see a new series coming. I mean, No, I, nobody saw that coming. But I yeah. think that might still be in the works, but now it just may be so. years down the road yeah, as yeah. a collector's I agree. edition That's, when we're all 50. That is one thing that is certain to happen at some point. It's just a matter of getting the timing yeah. right. I mean, maybe they'll have Funimation actually do it and say, hey, remember those level sets you did? Oh, Lord. And then we can all cry. He said, following the completion of the Boo Arc in Japan, going back to Kai, Funimation finally starts releasing it in North America. So you thought maybe as soon as it's done there, that'll be the starting point. Mm -hmm. It still has not happened. Yeah. And then the fun part is now Super has just thrown a complete clusterfuck wrench into that mm -hmm. yeah good job toei good luck funimation uh going to video games real quick you said xenoverse so successful that a sequel is announced for 2016 uh we already had that conversation yeah so. i did not foresee them actually supporting it for so long yeah yeah i mean that's i think that's so part of the issue them. You said Shueisha announces plans for a full color print release of the beginning of the series you were right they announced plans for it yes I was a little bit off on when they would release it. Yeah, it started coming out uh, February this month, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, I can't wait to buy all those. <laughs> it's like me and Psycho Jump, you and all the Japanese manga releases. I do. I have so many releases of the manga, it's not even funny. You said Viz announces their continuation of the full color. So your predictions were about announcements, not of actual releases. And it seems exactly. like you nailed all those. And I have the same this year, so... 
Yay. You said Heroes continues to be so successful uh, that it will do something amazingly awesome for its fifth anniversary. <laughs> um, they kind of did. They had a they fifth anniversary did. event. Yeah. And then there was like a special edition magazine thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. was uh, a fairly neat magazine. Um, I ordered two so I could destroy one scanning some stuff out of it. But there, yeah. um, they did have the fifth anniversary live stream event. They had done some anniversary streams in the past. Um, this one in particular had Horikawa and Nozawa, which was great to see. We get a comment from Toriyama out of it. So that was neat. Oh, yeah. And it gave him a chance to digitally release all of Victory Mission for free. Yes, that was very surprising i could not believe that, yeah, that is when they're just so like hey we're gonna them. post this up and i mean there are image files that you can just download yeah okay very very surprising for them um no collected print release of it but then he's like oh i guess we should also mention gohan super Saiyan 4 that was kind of the big announcement yeah that all right but uh the magazine yeah the the what was it like the fifth anniversary official fan book it's a really great publication uh we got some concept designs from toriyama in there uh, a 29th mm -hmm. chapter of victory mission victory mission able to continue uh at least one more chapter over very, there. Very, very temporarily. Uh, great artwork from Toyotaro in there. Just a really, really solid magazine. Even if you're not into heroes and even if you can't read Japanese, it's a great overview of those five years of that game with all the cars and just outlining what all the little stories were and how it transitioned from character to character, story to story, all the upgrades. Just a very, very solid magazine that was only like five bucks one of their mooks so see it was amazingly awesome it was amazingly i think you literally awesome. just said that i did all right moving on you said shuisha announces some new guidebook in addition to the one that comes out for the f movie and to be fair at the time we obviously did not know about dragon ball super so right. i just meant like some random little guidebook and, well, we did get a, we didn't really get a guidebook for the Frieza movie, though, right? It was just the, the movie book, wasn't it? The yeah, theatrical I book? was really surprised by that. But, yeah, it was just the theatrical booklet hmm. was the only thing that they released besides the anime manga. Right, right. Battle of Gods got the book you could buy at the theater, but then another separate official guide later on. Frieza movie, not so much. I mean, to be fair, the book that came with the special edition of the home release in Japan with the storyboards for the movie, I mean, oh yeah, that was amazing. So that's something a little different. That's something that's never happened before. Right. Uh, but new guidebook. Uh, yeah, we just got probably the best do i go out on a limb and say it's the best dragon ball book to ever be released i would say so yeah i thought when the chogashu came out that was that, I agree. that was there and i think this one surpassed that the super history book so it didn't quite hit or no when did it come out it was january uh, wasn't it? january okay. So it didn't quite hit 2015. It was the beginning of 2016, but it was announced in 2015. The Super History book really is, like, it is a dream come true for Dragon Ball fans. It totally is. For last year, we did get the Dragon Ball Super Superstar Guide. So <laughs> okay. there's your 2015 guidebook. All right. Boom. Check. So you did say some new guidebook. It definitely does, because it's something kind of covers a thing, but barely. It's so weird. It's, it's like, it's a decent sized book. And for how little they actually put in it. Next thing you said, no new movie announced in 2015. Heath, you were correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I really went out on a limb on that one. We were thinking every two years we would get yeah. probably a third movie and that might be it. And now I have no idea because there's a TV series. You said no screenings of F in the States. Yeah. Only other international screenings announced by the end of the year. We were so wrong on this. Battle of Gods set like this precedent. That we all thought they would just adhere to. Just be slow and dish it yeah. out. Yeah. Not so much. We went from being like, hey, we were the last country to get Battle of Gods, but we were the first ones to get the next one. How does that happen? Like I've been saying, until we got their shit together for one product and they're only allowed to be smart about one thing. And then they have to. And then they came over here and they're like, oh my God, people like this. Heath, your last prediction no more Dragon Boxes from Funimation. Yes. That was that. That was my way out there prediction. Now that we've checked up on last year's predictions, now is the time that we make new predictions for the next year. Heath, you said that you are uh, unprepared for this episode and you do Purposely. not have 
Purposefully. All right. Yeah. Let's let's say that instead of being unprepared, you you're doing it on purpose. So it's. I not, am. It's I decided bad. I would wing this. All right. Because I thought it would make it more interesting, not only for myself but for everybody out there. All right. We'll see about that. So you are on deck then. Keith, making new predictions for next year. What do you think? All right. So my first prediction, let's see. Which one do I want to go with? Let's do uh, Let's do a Dragon Ball Super one. How about that? Okay. Dragon Ball Super will keep going strong, and we will get a new movie from the series. You think in addition to Super or separate from Super, a new movie? I think it will be separate, unlike Battle of Gods and Resurrection F, which influenced the beginning of the series. Mm -hmm. I think we will get a Dragon Ball Super movie, similar to what they did with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, more so Dragon Ball Z, Mm -hmm. where it will feature the main characters or whatever characters are currently being featured okay. in the TV anime. Oh, all right. And uh, it'll have a different storyline that doesn't necessarily tie in with anything, but maybe it'll if, be fun. Maybe if there's another time skip or training period, it's mm-hmm. kind of like off to the side, and this is what happened when you weren't looking kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So what do you have? What is your first prediction? Oh, you want to go back and forth like this and make it let's, really let's difficult it. for me when I go back a year from now and try to collect all these? <laughs> it's like you're reading my mind. <laughs> Every time, and I say this every year, like whatever you're doing at any given point is just making it difficult for me a year from now. Well, well do you want me to just keep going? No, no, it's that. fine because I kind of have things arranged by topic. Um, okay. So we'll go to my thoughts on Super. This really is the big one. So I guess let's talk international licensing. Um, oh, clearly, that was be my next one. Clearly, it's open for licensing. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Toonami Asia is getting an English dub. We have to continue saying it's an English dub. There is not necessarily a single English dub. You will still get Funimation's dub at some point if you're into that. Um, but can Funimation and Toei really go all of the 2016 calendar year without really acknowledging or announcing something? I think that's going to be a tough pill to swallow, but I'm going to be the contrarian here and say, no, I think there will be not a peep from any of those two sides other than Funimation saying, oh yeah, we're aware it exists and you know, we're looking into it. I do not think they're going to have anything for 2016. Hmm. Okay then. So what is your uh, licensing prediction for Super? <laughs> well, my licensing prediction kind of ties in with the Boo arc of Kai. Okay. Do you think that's a stipulation that that has to be done first? No, I'm just kind of tying them together. Okay. I, I don't think it necessarily has to be done first. I think it will premiere on TV. It'll just go in sequence of what is running on Toonami. Mm-hmm. It, there will be no giant fanfare I think that, hey, we're continuing on. It's just going to happen. And that it'll be released on video. And I'm guessing at the very end of 2016, we will hear something about licensing, but we won't actually get anything until 2017. That's my prediction. I'm going to stick with Super real briefly. You were talking about maybe a side movie for it. I want to talk about predictions for the story of Super itself. Okay. I think my... My big, bold prediction here is that no one is actually evil. I don't think there's any greater threat out there. Uh, you see a lot of stuff out there. Maybe Vados is evil, or Beerus will be killed, or Hit is the main villain. I see a lot of that out there. I'm going to blindly put my faith in Toriyama here, and I, I just I want to think, I want to hope that much like Battle of Gods, really turn things on its head. I want to think Toriyama has something different in mind for where Super is going to go, where it's not going to just be, here's a tournament, and it's not going to just be, here's the next villain, let's get stronger to fight him. Especially coming off of Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, they're asking a lot of us to buy into yet another continued power creep here. Um, I think we're in a really good point where Goku is clearly not the strongest in addition to beerus we know that monica is stronger than goku so we have just this definitely a stride and even vegeta is outclassing goku at different points here in different ways so i really think we have an opportunity to do a storyline that is not simply next villain get stronger to fight next villain i don't know what it could be and I don't have any reason to expect anything different, but I really want to hope. So that's going to be my wishful prediction here. I'm really going to back you on that because 
that's kind of how I've been feeling. I can see ways you could fit a villain in. Sure, it sure. It just doesn't seem like it's going to happen. You know, I'm you thinking, know? I see a lot of people, I don't know why people pick on Hit in particular. I don't know, is he supposed, I haven't, I don't remember the character bios. <laughs> like, he's a mystery, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. When it first came out, it just said he's a mysterious figure. Right. So there's, uh, without getting into too many spoilers, there's uh, the Kyoto arc of Kenshin has a character that survives and turns out is actually involved with another character in the next story arc. Like he was kind of undercover during that part and he's actually working for another bigger bad. And I feel like that would be a very easy out for someone like Hit or anyone else on that team. And I don't really feel like Shampa or Vados are going to turn out to be evil because we've already found out, well, they're twin universes. Mm -hmm. Everybody's brother and sister or brother and brother or twins. You would think if Vados is going to be evil, that would make Whis evil. And I just don't see any of that happening. Well, you say that now. How many years did we say Whis is going to come out as being a Makayoshin? That is true. Um, (laughs) So I will at least call us out on that. Yeah. Will Toriyama bring that back? Maybe we need to go back to that prediction. Maybe the prediction finally is Makayoshin come to be something. But it's not Whis. But it's not Whis. Yeah. That that could happen. I mean, the fun thing about Super is the way they've opened it up to having multiple universes, uh, this could go on for an eternity, Mm. really, at this point. I don't know that there's much more beyond this you could go, although we said that about what now they're calling Universe 7. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, I guess that kind of leads into my next prediction, which is Dragon Ball Super related, is just the length of the series. Mm, Yeah. Because that's always been hotly contested. Uh, There have been numbers that have been thrown out there. And... In my opinion. In your expert Ujio opinion. Yes, let's go with that. I feel like the Shampa arc that we are in right now will go for a little while. Um, I think by the end of this year, 2016, it will be done. And I do think there will be one more thing after this. I think they're going to either go to Toriyama or Toei is going to feel this themselves. But that may well put an end to the series. How much do you think Toriyama has delivered in terms of guidance for a story? Is it just through this Universe 6 stuff? As far as I would venture to say, I think this is as far as he's gone. Mm -hmm. And then it's interesting. uh, uh, We'll we'll get to this in another theory of mine, so I I don't want to go too far with this. All right. Well, do you have any other super stuff? Because I feel like I'm kind of done with it now. I do. I have one other super thing. No, go for it then. Okay, there's been a lot of talk about, well, what about GT? What about the end of the series? And as we've clearly seen, especially in the last episode, we're going to summon Shenlong, and all of a sudden, you would assume a year has gone by. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, the question arises of how long can they keep going with this Uh before you start running out of timeline to use and run into the the end of Dragon Ball in the manga, uh, the 28th Budokai. The, the, well, so I'm going to pause you there because there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that you can run into in dialogue alone. Uh, people yes. continue to point to Bulma's line about haven't seen you in five years. And like if we're going strictly by dialogue in the manga, we're running out of time. But in terms of things you actually see with your own eyes, maybe mm-hmm. not like someone wished away all the memories of everything that happened in Super to make everything else still work. Like we literally see the 28th Budokai in Oob. So what's right. going to happen there so i i'm gonna go with two options and i think one of these is going to be what happens um the first one is toriyama who we know toriyama doesn't afraid don't care yeah isn't afraid he will rewrite the end Uh, and make it just work because he doesn't give a shit so super will overwrite the ending with its own telling of those events okay which will be kind of ironic so that will be his third it'll be the second time he's kind of rewritten (laughs) yeah yeah my second option which i kind of think might be more of what's going to happen is that we are going to explore these other universes and with them traveling and everything going on time becomes a non-issue at that point Mm, and basically anything can happen so they just come back and it's as if no time has passed on earth Mm -hmm. or something i mean it raises a lot of questions but i think it'd be fun and i i also like that toriyama's just gonna be like oh Fuck it. Whatever. Yeah. And uh, people will lose their mind. We do enjoy when people get angry. I do. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll leave Super behind. I want to go to video games for a little bit here. Uh, Last year, I finally, I don't know if I did the year before, but at least last year, I said nothing 
about Zenkai Battle Royale at the time. It's time to bring it back. Zenkai Battle is back on the table for predictions. They're Dear still Lord. updating it. We don't know anything about a sequel to Xenoverse. Is this the year they fill in time for a two-year Xenoverse 2 development cycle to bring out Zenkai Battle? And if they do, does that put it in the same position of as Battle of Z, where they basically send it out to die in between larger releases. So I'm asking questions and not really making a prediction. But, <laughs> uh, I will put That's it, the biggest cop out. I will put it as a possibility. I mean, mm-hmm. Senkai Battle Royale is five years old at this point. It's as old as Heroes is. I know, and it's still going. So I don't really have a prediction there because I'm sick of making those predictions with Senkai Battle Royale. But tied in with that, like we were saying earlier, we're already past that one year mark of Xenoverse and we know nothing about it. So I don't know what they do with that. I really feel like they have to follow up on Xenoverse. And I wonder if the success took them by surprise and is really making them second guess how do we approach a sequel to this to not ruin what we've built up uh, as we've seen with those international sales. Yeah. How do, how do they do it as well a second time? So again, no prediction there. I'll move on to heroes, heroes for non predictions here. So what is up with ultimate mission? They continued to support ultimate mission Two the way I thought they would do ultimate mission one. My prediction at, at the time for ultimate mission one, would they would do like a $20 expansion DLC pack for it. Uh, ultimate mission two, they just keep supporting for free long beyond uh, its initial expected sales cycle. But it does feel like we have enough material at this point for a full ultimate mission three and I, you know i said the same thing last year but especially now into all the god mission stuff uh, a lot of the stuff that they're porting into ultimate mission two it's not everything so there's still a ton more to do there it, it feels like a safe bet the 3ds is still on the market and doing well enough and x is still enough of uh, uh an unknown that it makes sense to do something else there but but because we have project fusion on the horizon i guess ultimate mission three is not going to come out this year. I don't know. So again, I'm more recapping the news than making actual predictions. But uh, I think you gotta stop doing. That's that, how man. I'm gonna roll this year. <laughs> Heath, do you have any game predictions, or is there uh, another area you want to start heading into? Um, I think there will be a sequel to Xenoverse announced this year. Come out this year, both. I think it will be announced. I don't even want to say shortly, but like mid year and come out. What's the typical like November? Yeah, the the normal time period was November for Dragon Ball mm-hmm. games. Xenoverse, I mean, Burst Limit actually changed that up when that first came out, but that was a, a crazy time period. Xenoverse, yeah, that was the beginning of a calendar year when that came out. So that was a little bit different. That was like February so, 5th in Japan, something like that. Yeah, so I'll go with that. I think by November, we will have a sequel to Xenoverse. We'll have it this year. So that would be yeah. almost two years in between. So mm-hmm. much like how games used to be, where it was a very short cycle between announcement and release, Xenoverse had a very long tail ahead of time. Now, I agree with you. It may not be called Xenoverse, yeah. you know, from last year. Yeah. Is that branding um, good? Maybe it's Xeno something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Xeno is the branding and not Xenoverse mm-hmm. as a whole. Huh, interesting. Do you have manga predictions? Because I have a couple things here. I do. I'll let you go first. All right, I'll go. So the I think the question is Viz. Who the hell knows what Viz is doing? Uh, if the three and one. I'm not buying the three in ones. I should know this. I don't know if they're done yet. If not, they should be very shortly. Uh, we know the full color for Frieza is on the horizon. So that puts us in a very similar position to 2015, where it's we know what's coming out already. They've already outlined the schedule of that stuff. So that really just leaves the ancillary stuff on the table. Things like Dragon Ball SD. Uh, Dragon Ball SD is getting its second release in France. So much like how we know Super is on the table for licensing, SD clearly is on the table for licensing. That's the kind of thing, though. France is a much smaller country than the United States, and Glenat is a, a very longtime partner with Shueisha and Viz is as well, but I don't know that SD is the right product for the American market. I think if you can't say... We've even seen with everything Viz has put out, things like Sandland and Kawa um, and Jocko. Just because Toriyama's name is on it is not a guaranteed success. Toriyama is not the branding here in this country. It is the Dragon Ball name. Um, but even if it's called Dragon Ball SD, I, I just don't see that moving here in this country. I feel like maybe the first volume would be more 
popular only from a curiosity standpoint. Yeah, yeah. And then and just, after that, it would just, just totally drop. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a smart business decision to bring over SD. So I kind of have to look at it from that perspective. So I really think it's going to be another quiet year. And I think the elephant in the room is the super history book. That is mm-hmm. an enormous, enormous undertaking. And again, I don't think that's a sound business decision for Viz. So I don't know if I really have anything for Viz because like you said, a lot of things were outlined. Originally, my thinking a few months ago was to counter Julian, uh, <laughs> no cons and bond will be released no. in the United States and they will only focus on full color. Now, we kind of already know that's the case. So going across the ocean, um, I think we will get a compilation volume of Dragon Ball Super. I think that's going to happen at some point this year. At least the first volume. Kind of like SD, it will be way drawn out between releases just because V-Jump is a monthly release. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, we'll get volume one, but volume two, who knows, 2018? That's what I'm going with. I think they're going to try to strike while the iron's hot with Dragon Ball Super being popular. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to get it out. As fast as they can. Problem is, it's going to take them like, it takes a year just to get enough content. Chapters. Yeah, yeah. Just real quick, I did look on Amazon. The uh, final volume of the three in ones will be coming out in September. So we have the majority of the year. So yeah, between that and what they've outlined for the Frieza full colors, that's enough of a release schedule to keep them busy. Viz. Oh, yeah. Especially with Dragon Ball. Because that, that is one thing Viz has been pretty good about. Uh, I won't say they're fantastic, but not flooding the market with the same material. Yeah, I think this and the full color is uh, enough of a duplicate, but mm-hmm. one is so different enough. The full color is very different. So it's, Yes, especially it's okay. with the way Viz released it. Yeah, the larger size. Yeah. 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 All right. Anything else you got for a manga after my little... I... Okay, I'll go out on a limb on this one. Kind of Maybe it's not much of a limb. A very, very small one. Victory Mission will not see another chapter this year. You don't think so? Yeah, I, no. I kind of feel the same way where they've got Toyotaro wrapped up doing the super stuff and all the little one-offs and the sides for other stuff. I feel like Victory Mission became his baby and then they pulled his second baby away from him to do <laughs> other stuff. Yep. Poor dude. You feel bad for him. But it's nice because he really does love the series so much and it comes across. So yeah, that chapter 29 in particular, he put oh, some yeah. love into some of those drawings. Of course, we don't know how much lead time he had for that. So he probably had all the time in the world. He Which knew. would be nice for him to actually be like, hey, I can take my time on something and do what I want with it. Right, right. Yep. And I'm hoping that whenever my prediction comes true about getting volume one, mm-hmm. we get some sort of either, I don't know, maybe a Q&A with him or some sort of backstory where they ask him about Toriyama's involvement. Because I think that would be really neat to know, mm. you know, exactly what's going on. I personally don't think we'll ever really find out, but it would be nice. Are you talking about with the manga in particular? Yes, or like when Super they release a like a, a Tonko Bond mm-hmm. of like volume one or something for Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, there will be something in there that hints at how involved are people with this? Yeah, it's it really does feel like there are two separate adaptations of Toriyama's story, Mm -hmm. underlying story going on right now. And we knew that was going to be the case. But the fact that there are enough differences really feels like Toei doesn't know what they're doing ahead of time. But Shueisha needs to have something almost two months ahead of where Toei is going to be like, well, I guess we just do it. Our discussion's always kind of been. How much is Toyotaro taking liberties yeah, with some yeah. of these story elements? And you really start to notice some differences between what Toei has been doing and what Toyotaro has been doing. Mm-hmm. So you kind of wonder, like, is one side following the script more than the other? Or did Toriyama just write it so vague that <laughs> they're both interpreting it somewhat differently? But we do know that Toei is kind of doing their own thing of throwing in some curveballs every once in a while. Right, right. So I think a really good example case study for what we're talking about where what's Toei making versus what Toyotaro is writing. Look at Toyotaro's adaptation of the end of the Battle of Gods arc. I feel like it really was, well, he just expected it to be very similar to how the movie played out. So the manga adaptation basically was how the movie went. And then not that the TV series was completely different, but it was different enough 
with the way mm-hmm. that that fight turned out and some of the things they were talking about was different enough that you feel like Toyotaro wrote it months ahead of time and then Toei changed their mind. We know how rushed their schedule is, changed their minds, they didn't have the scripts done and it just turned into not an entirely different beast, but different enough. I kind of don't know where else to go with predictions. I feel like the safe bet is always talk about the TV series or movies, talk about the manga, talk about the video Mm -hmm. games. But if 2015 has proven anything, it's that Japan and North America are going to be as completely unpredictable as ever with what they're doing. Do you have anything else you can wildly speculate on? I mean, we covered all of the main points. I feel like um, at this point, it would, I think, be arbitrary to even say like, oh, we're going to get another guidebook or because a lot of that stuff, when you have a running TV series, they're just naturally going to happen, which is kind of what's really changed this show a little bit for this year, because there's so much new stuff happening. It's almost not predictions on half this crap. It's like this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we know what the merchandising machine will do when yes, this kind of we're thing gonna is get going. CDs. Yeah, we're gonna get more cards. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get guidebooks. Well, let's talk about them because you talked about the kind of non guide with the superstar mm-hmm. guide. Now that we're into the Shampa Universe Six material, you think we'll see a follow up guide about? Dragon Ball Super at all? And if so, how far into Super stuff will it go? See, that's what I'm curious about, just because so much of the beginning of the series is a rehash of the movies. Right, so like, what's the point of talking about that? We've kind of already covered Right. That. I do think at some point there will be something, especially that will will hev- it will heavily feature Toriyama's involvement as far as just character designs. Mm, yeah, we'll see a lot more um, of that stuff, yeah. Yeah, I think... Maybe some of his maybe scribbles That could be more at the end. Cool. Yeah. I think th- at this point, they're really documenting it a lot better. I hope so. I hope, than yeah. they ever did with the original because... As we know, a lot of that stuff just, there was no thought of releasing some of these guidebooks or mm-hmm. keeping anything. And Toriyama himself is just terrible at keeping this stuff. I mean, he just gives it to his kids <laughs> right, and has them right. do whatever. We saw in so, those interviews. Yeah, he's just, yeah, whatever. Um, um, I guess my, I guess it's more of a question okay. at this point would be, so we had the Daizenshu and then we had the Chozenshu, which were mostly just rehashes of well, basically carbon copies yeah, of yeah. the Daisenshu reprints and with a little bit of updates here and there, I almost see something more along the lines of at the very end of everything, it will be an entirely new set of ultimate guidebooks kind of like that. Um, but it also begs the question because they love their merchandising. Are they going to do anything while the series is actually running? Is this the year we get the Kanzenshu released? I hope not. We've thought about it. And by we've thought about it, we've we've discussed what's the likelihood what we, that they would actually release something called the content. And then what do we do in response? So, he yeah. as of our recording right now, and speaking of super, uh super's on in half an hour. So I want it to is. start wrapping things up because we probably want to watch that. Um but I did ask on Twitter what people's wild speculation might be. Oh so yes. I do want to go through a, a few of these. So if you're not already in there, load up the Twitter account. I'm loading it up right now. I'll I'll read off we're not going to read everything. We got a ton of responses, so we can't read everything. So, so we're going to pick the most sarcastic, yes, satirical responses we we can. <laughs> I think we have to hit this one first. Jake, who is a part of Consentu, uh, Silver Cell in Super. Seriously, I would be totally fine with that. Why not? Just bring everybody back. I I do like. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody sent this in on Twitter. I know I've read it on our forum and a, a few other places mm-hmm. of. How would would people just lose their mind if all of a sudden lunch just shows up? I want that. I I feel like she needs like, to just be there. Just show up. Don't don't make a big deal out of it. It's like yeah. oh lunch on. Like totally normal. Like yep. She just walks in at Capsule Corp. Like and they like, just hey, saw how's it going. Yep. Yeah. Like no time has passed at all. Exactly. I need this. I need this in my life. Um. All right. So just hitting up again. Other random ones. Uh, awesome possum. Shunsuke Kikuchi will come back to the franchise in some form or fashion. If only, good Lord, could we please? I feel like you have a personal beef with this. I have a one-sided uh, beef <laughs> with Sumitomo here. Heath, pick out a couple you want to read. Uh, Cell Factor XQ says, the whole Universe 7 gets destroyed. I have no response to that. Do we just move over to Universe 6? Everyone moves? Yeah. I mean, we already know Earth is a wasteland there. Yeah. Just use the Super Dragon Balls, move Earth anyway. Move everyone over? Yeah, everybody's happy. Okay. 
You get two gods of destruction for one universe. Yeah, that'll work out well. I mean, what else could be better? Um, And my next favorite one of all time, I, I read this when it first came in. We have to read it. Chavel wrote in on Twitter and said, new movie announced, has fusion, even more Balma fan service, and Gohan actually does something relevant to the plot in Super. Talk about wishful thinking here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all on board, though. Don't misunderstand. I'm all about this. It's a great idea. This is from, I'm going to say Gi or it's G, however you want to roll. Blue Fusion, Blusion. Love it. It's going to happen. Oh, man. We got so many good things here. Uh, a lot of people still hoping for Dragon Boxes. Lee says, American Zamovies D-Box, Japanese Z Blu-rays, and another film announced. Uh, talked a lot about some of that already. Uh, Alex says, I predict that we will hear a shocking secret about one of the human Z fighters. I don't know how many shocking secrets we have left in here. Majin Adam says, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan 2, and it will have tie-dye hair. <laughs> just rainbows rainbows everywhere uh, you know going along with that peter says super saiyan purple then we learned that trunks was at this level the whole time oh my god dun 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 plot twist and then uh our buddy kaboom sent in uh i think this is probably meant for you more than anyone okay. the obligatory hopeless home release of zenkai <laughs> battle now, if we're going to favor friends of the site here, I have a couple I want to read. You know, we make no apologies for uh, favoring people here. I mentioned them earlier. Joe, the Space Kappa. Last year, we got a new movie, a new TV series, and the best video game in years. Is any prediction crazy anymore? See, logical. That's what we were talking thought. about. Yes. You could throw anything out and be like, yeah, that probably could happen. Uh, Joey says movie version of the current super arc announced. So a little bit different from what you're saying, Heath, where we kind of get the uh, the movie version of the same events. But he goes on to say what I'd actually prefer, Jocko the Galactic Patrolman anime special. I am right there with you, man. See, that would be awesome. See, I'm afraid because they can't make good stuff anymore. So <laughs> I can't, my heart can't take a bad Jocko adaptation. What if he just sat around like building little rock towers? Just totally for, silent. Like an entire movie. Just silent. Yes. It's silent. Yes. No score I agree. at all. And occasionally he just coughs or farts. And then at the very end, Bulma calls him and he, he leaves. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what's been going on. The special is just Jocko sitting there waiting for that phone call. Because he does nothing. Love it. I know. I still love Outside him. of Earth. I still love you know. him. You know, you want to do some animation ones here. We have a few of these. Gabby says, Dragon Ball Super starts being animated by Madhouse. People complain even more. I I really don't care who animates it at this point. It's going to look like what it looks like. Going along with that, AJ says, Toei apologizes for Super's quality, kills Precure, and sends their animators over to Dragon Ball. Fans still complain. You know, people accuse us of being cynical. All y'all bastards out there. I think we rubbed off on you. I don't know. I, I'm with you, and I think we've had a discussion. Yes, we all agree the animation can be bad, but has everyone forgotten the other series? Like, just go watch them. Everything else that Toei makes? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like, it's not like this is a new thing. Everyone's complaining on every whatever. side of every fandom. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And, uh, Damon... Gore sent in a uh, sequel to the 10th anniversary special covering the Piccolo Dime Mao arc. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that sounds yeah. great. I think Dragon Ball has like, you know, sailed away. Yeah. It's never coming back. I got to read this because this is right up my alley. Devin says, Kenji Yamamoto will be vindicated, showing that other artists ripped him off. It's so true. Oh, we have the best listeners and fans here. We do. It's like they know us. <laughs> I know. They're writing stuff specifically to get our attention and be read on the show. And I'm falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker. It's okay. See, I like I like where uh, Dave Zapp on Twitter is going. Uh, GT slash super crossover movie announced. Yep. There's your tie-in, folks. Everybody's happy. And they ruin it. And everyone complains. Mary talked about this when Super was starting. Uh, she really wanted them to really play the clever artistic game of just make it all work. Who cares? cares who mm -hmm. writes it and how it's related to what Toriyama did just make it all work and that could be cool and I still agree I think that could be cool I don't think it's going to work out that way but so be it here is my new favorite one okay and this might be the last one I read a uh, magic box jump super anime tour special gets licensed released and loved fans argue to have Tarble renamed Tabe this <laughs> is the year <laughs> someone follows us very closely <laughs> <laughs> yeah too close <laughs> I, 
can't. I'm losing it. <laughs> I can't stop. There's laughing. so many inside just... things here going on that I just, I just can't. I can't even. Keith, let's. Um, I'm gonna go cook some burgers, drink some beer, and watch Super. How's that sound? Is your beer finally cold? It should be at this point. I hope, I hope so. I really... Did you throw it out in the snow like I suggested? <laughs> no, it's just in the fridge. But that would have been a smart move. Oh, uh, this was. Uh, you know, last year's a thing. It was a it thing. sure was a show. Last year's prediction episode, I had the the curse of Julian being on a predictions episode and having terrible audio issues. And the curse did kind of happen this year, where Audacity unexpectedly quit on me. But but it backfired, and it got you. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I did, I believe, recover from that. So we'll see how that goes. We're not allowed to do predictions episodes. So what you're saying is the first half of this episode, like. Just won't exist. I know. The last half will. Yeah, we'll see. I think it's good. I'm pretty sure it's good. Let's bring it to a close. This has been episode, what did I say? 395? I already don't remember. I thought it was 400. No, it's not yet. We will get there. I'm determined to get there. My life goal. Uh, Heath, what we got going on right now? Other than changing every instance of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo throughout the site. Um, We're going to have some other name changes coming. Uh, We're working on a few things. We have a guide that may happen at some point. I know. People do anything? I, I don't know. Um, Very exciting. We've got some translation stuff we're still working on. Pretty sure we talked about debuting that guide back in 2013, but then we did. Then Battle of Gods happened, so maybe. Well, can... actually, we did it in preface. Of oh, Battle that's of right. Gods. We were hoping to launch alongside that. Then it got sidelined. Yeah, and... we were so optimistic at that point. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, and then I've just been doing some general site upgrade stuff that nobody cares about, and um, I don't know if I really care to announce it, but I've been going through the episode guides now and for episode title cards i'm putting in larger versions because the internet is a thing that is now faster right than it used to be yeah and we, we can have larger images i'm looking down the recent page edit log and it's just hugio endlessly yeah oh there i am i popped up again so enjoy that that's a thing that is that's cool. happening um and then just Trying to keep up with Dragon Ball Super, I mean, it's amazing how much it affects because uh, we go through, you know, manga material. Thank God that's monthly. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, weekly episodes and production guide, cast guide, uh, all the other subsequent things that get updated along with it. We've got home video release stuff going on. Really just been jumping all over the place trying to get caught up on things. And Julian picked up the uh, recent or the first four volumes of the uh, Shonen arc. Oh, right. Yeah, there's some Q&A stuff Of the there. full color. So there are some Q&As in there. We'll probably be doing those at some point. Uh, that page has been updated. Speaking of q and it's not really Q&A, but comments. Uh, we do have another batch already translated. It's just a matter of one of us making the time to make the page for it. Uh, more stuff from the Super History book. So that'll be coming. Um, and then there are interviews in there. And I stopped hearing from Jake after I sent him one of the interviews. So I think I officially scared him away. You scare everyone away. <laughs> I, I really am. Just I know that's a nice thing to say, but... I really am a slave driver. Like, oh, you're done with this? Well, here, here's the next thing. You're a slave driver in a way that, hey, here's the next thing, but you can get to it when you want. I'm a very nice like, slave driver here. Yeah, Mary gets upset that you're not, like, more angry <laughs> at us for not doing things. <laughs> She's like, well, Which what are they really working funny on? Be- You're working on stuff. What are you doing? What are they doing? So, yeah, this was an episode. It was. Now we're... Thanks for having me, Mike. It's been a blast. It has been great. Now that we're about 15 minutes off from the uh, from the show, let's bring it to a close. www.kanzenshuu.com. <coughs> Kanzen Shoe. Uh, hey, we've done three weeks in a row now. We'll... Uh, We'll see. What? See how that continues to go here. That's a thing. It is a thing. Uh, I have some really cool stuff planned. It's uh, just a matter of can it fit in with all the other site stuff going on. It is just uh, just another general reminder that Kanzenshu is not anyone's job here. This is actually what we do in our free time or when we're supposed to be doing real work work. And instead we don't. what we like to think. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when we can't do a weekly show, it's not that we don't want to. It's that sometimes I come home and collapse. We all do mm-hmm. the same thing. And then we all decide, I don't really want to talk to myself. And then you did it. Yeah. And so, it's weird. I don't know yeah. how other people do it. I can only entertain myself talking to myself for about 10 minutes. You can tell that I kind of started babbling. You start doing like inside jokes with yourself. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I start having two-sided conversations to myself because that's how that's the way I know to moderate discussions. So when it's not happening, I make it happen as if there's two mics down here because you're not a real person. You're just a different mic talking back to exactly. me. Exactly. So. Yep. 
You could have Funimation Mike and Japan Mike. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Uh, I already said the name of the site. You have been Heath. I have been Mike. There is Julian. There is also Jake. We are Kan Zenshu. This was an episode of our podcast. I don't know how it was in terms of uh, on the technical side and also the enjoyment side. I hope it was wonderful. I hope you had a great time listening to the show. I am just overdone right now. And We'll, uh, we'll be back with more intellectual conversation <laughs> later. We will. Um, these recap Maybe. episodes, these are just total BSing around, having fun, and... Uh, we gotta do one a year, man. Yep. You gotta enjoy it. I hope we don't sound totally dismissive of the year. I feel like the way I'm talking, I'm just talking and then I go down like this. Like, I'm disregarding <laughs> everything that I'm saying and you're saying. I'm not disregarding the episode. I better stop talking now because I... You should. It was a good make, year. Make it stop. Just make it okay. stop. Thank you for joining us on Consent You, the podcast. We'll be around till at least episode 400. After that, who knows? No guarantees. Peace out, y'all. I almost think with SD, they would just be better off saying, okay, we're just going to have you do collected volumes. Yeah. Like, we're not even going to put it in jump anymore. Because I bet she could bang half that stuff out Probably. super quick. Because, yeah, like you said, she's not coming up with a lot of dialogue. All of the drawings basically based on all the old panels already. Uh-huh. She's just making their heads big and their bodies small. Yep. So, yep. And then she throws in a gag or two, which I think is down to, what, one gag per it's chapter? It's about one per chapter, yeah. So. The last couple, I have been flipping through the Tonko bone next to it while going. Th- I mean, it is exactly the same. Almost page for page. There's wow. a couple things like a little bit of the extra pain from Tenshin Han snapping Yamcha's legs. Like she cut out a little bit surrounding that. So it kind of jumped. But between all those panels, all the dialogue, exactly the same. All the framing, exactly the same. Jeez. Yep. Oh, fun. I just wonder if maybe amongst children it's doing really well and that's why it's we'll never know i don't know it's not like they're gonna talk about the (laughs) i don't know the readership of that (laughs) we're gonna interview this (laughs) five-year-old do you like psycho jump hard-headed questions son what do you think about dragon ball sd i don't know (laughs) what psycho jump i like the pictures it's in color I can't read kanji. <laughs> the audience for that is the content shoe children. That's really what it is. It is. Yeah, that would be a nice lead in. Okay, we want you guys to read this first before you hit the hardcore stuff. <laughs> all the jokes fly over their head. That's the thing with that is all the jokes make no sense to someone who's never read it before. I know, like yeah, a it's, child. It's too childish for us. <laughs> it's poor product. Bye. Makes no sense. All right, let's record a show. Do we have to? Why don't... Let's just do this and just <laughs> <Okay>. release it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I'll like, do that. No buffer music for anything. No intro. Just just this 25-minute, 30-minute audio file of just us shooting the shit about anything. I mean, we could do that. And... All right. Here we go. <clears throat> right. Anyway. I'm starting a show. Okay. I suppose what we is this, should 390... do that. It, just say 400 minus <laughs> something. No, I'm going to get it right. 395. Do you have a beer yet? No. Why not? Because it's not cold yet. Well, throw it outside in the snow. <laughs> I probably could have done that. This is consent. I didn't like how I said that. Uh, <laughs> I just, this is, this is Kyaba. <laughs>